Standard of California, on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West, invites you to Let George Do It. Who is Sylvia? Another adventure of George Valentine. Personal notice, danger's my stock and trade. If it's something you're afraid to let someone else do for you, you can trust me, George Valentine. Write full details. Dear Mr. Valentine, is she trying to get me out of her life or is it my imagination? Is she in love with someone else or am I just going mad with jealousy? I've got to know these things about Sylvia or I won't be able to go on. Maybe it's weak and degrading for a man to grovel like this. But you've got to help me. I'll be waiting for you at my home. Waiting for you at my home between the hours of two and four. Gratefully yours, Leslie Graham. Uh-huh. Whoever wrote this letter had a hard time keeping the pen on the paper, Brooksy. Well, it's a pretty pathetic letter to swallow, George. It ain't problem, Angel. The guy's in a bad way. Well, I don't see how you fit in. This is something for the psychiatrist's couch. Yeah, maybe so. But I'm curious. Hmm? Who was Sylvia? What is she? Valentine, we have to hurry. Sylvia may be back any minute. She's out shopping. Yeah, I was waiting for you to get started, Graham. Yes, why don't you pull yourself together? Valentine, I, I want you to put my mind at ease. Assure me one way or the other that the things I keep thinking are either right or wrong. Oh, in other words, you want me to spy on your wife. Oh, no, it's not as tawdry as that. It's something that happens to a man when he's in love with a creature as beautiful as Sylvia. Why don't you try trusting her, Mr. Graham? Why? Here, Miss Brooks. Take a look at this picture. Can't you see why the word trust becomes meaningless? Mm. Yeah, very choice. But there are a great many beautiful women in the world, Graham. Some of them even manage to wash diapers. Oh, you wouldn't understand. When we were first married, the only person I was jealous of was her dead husband. Then it started. I, I began to hate every man who stared at her in the street. Then whenever I was away from her, I, I, I was no good for anything. All right, now, all right. Now there's a handsome blonde gentleman named Tom Vickers who trails around after her. So you can see how I... can I... see everything, Graham. But it's no soap. Divorce cases as such are not in my line. You would help me if I could make you understand. Understand how a man can get on his knees and keep begging a woman over and over again to tell him that she loves him. Yes, you could be that much afraid of losing a Brooksy, valentine. find the liquor cabinet. Get him some brandy. <laughs> okay, George. Oh, I... I'm tired, tired. Come on now, sit down. Now, go on. Do as I say. Sit down. I... I feel like I'm dead inside. You'll be all right in a minute. Here, Mr. Graham. Take this. Thank you. <sighs> oh, Leslie! Uh, this is a pretty tableau, I must say. What's happened? Uh, just two, two friends. They, they were just leaving, Sylvia. What has Leslie been telling you? And who are you? The name's Valentine, Mrs. Graham. Your husband thought we could investigate a private matter for him. And we were just leaving. I'm the only private matter in my husband's life, Mr. Valentine. But it seems that I'm not private enough. Please, Sylvia, not in front of these people. What difference does it make after what you must have told them? I'm sure Leslie hired you to spy on me. You can relax. I'm not for hire. I know what Leslie's like when he starts raving, Mr. Valentine. What were some of the more vivid highlights of his fantasies? Believe me, Mrs. Graham, he had nothing but good to say about you. Oh, Leslie, what am I going to do with you? I know. Oh, darling, what's happened to this love of ours? Well, you ought to know. You've done everything to strangle it with your insane jealousy. How oh, the other side lives. You never trusted me a moment. When you could have loved me, you made scenes. I like stopped off and got that... Oh, I didn't realize you had company, Sylvia. This isn't company, Tom. It's a three-ring circus. Leslie... After the disgusting spectacle you've made of yourself, I... I think you ought to go upstairs. Yes, Sylvia. All right, I'll go. Sylvia, you shouldn't have spoken to Leslie like that. Oh, shouldn't I have? Here, darling, take these packages into the other room. But that's true. Please, you had... Tom, I want to speak to these people. Alone. Okay, Sylvia. Yes, Sylvia? <laughs> I see we've become friends. You should live that long. No, I must apologize for Miss Brooks. Sometimes her frankness embarrasses me. What were you going to say? Well, Mr. Valentine, I wanted you to understand. I have to be firm with Leslie. 
If I coddled him, he'd only feel sorry for himself. Well, it seems to me that when a man's in a state like that, even a very beautiful wife could find a touch of kindness in her. Good night, Sylvia. Good night. You didn't mention your first name. Oh, brother. Never knew fresh air could smell so good. Oh, I think I know the secret of Sylvia's attraction. She wears knockout drops for perfume. Who is Sylvia? Well, the beautiful Sylvia seems to have made an impression. Brooksy, I got a fast research job for you. Back files down at the newspaper. What do you mean, George? There's a house full of dynamite back there, Angel. And when and if the blow-off comes, I want to be well informed. Curious again? Still curious. Who is Sylvia? What is she? George, I got all that stuff you wanted. And believe me, it took some digging. Good, good work, Brooksy. Let's see. Well, Sylvia hooked Leslie three years ago. He was a wealthy investment broker. Uh Uh-huh, but what about the late spouse number one? Oh, hold your hat, darling. Sylvia and Hugh Frankel, a Chicago importer, enjoyed married bliss less than a year. Then, alas, the poor man departed this world under sad circumstances. Yeah, yeah, Brooksy. Never mind the suspense. Well, after a midnight snack of liver patty sandwiches, which proved to be tainted, Frankel died of ptomaine poisoning and indigestion. Mm. It seems Sylvia wasn't feeling well that evening and just had toast and tea. Well, well. And according to the Chicago newspapers, the coroner's jury could see nothing other than an unfortunate accident. Yeah, well, it was probably looking at Sylvia all the time. What goes with that girl, George? What has she got? You mean besides deluxe equipment and extras? Mm Mm-hmm. A mind that's always figuring what's best for Sylvia. A heart that's just put there to beat, and a soul that thrives on men rolling in the dust. Oh, wait a minute. That's a recipe worth putting down. To some guys, that combination is like the apple was to Eve. They know it's no good for them, but they want it. Yeah, well, we'll go on with this session on abnormal psychology in a minute. Hello, Valentine. Oh, yeah, Lieutenant. Well, sure I was out there. What's that, Riley? Oh, yeah, I see. Yeah, of course I'll be right over here. What is it, George? For Lieutenant Riley, that was a short conversation. The good lieutenant happens to be very busy at the Grahams. The Grahams? Yeah, Brooksy. Leslie Graham killed himself this evening. Valentine, you wouldn't find me here at all tonight on what looks like a routine suicide case, except for one thing. Oh, I'm away ahead of you, Lieutenant. You found out that I paid a little visit to the Graham homestead yesterday. Mm Mm-hmm. Then I was afraid to stay away, if you know what I mean. Oh, we both know what you mean. Don't be so understanding, Miss Brooks. I'm sorry. We uh, checked with the partner in Graham's firm downtown. He says Graham was making all kinds of morbid remarks throughout the day about life not being worth the candle. You know, scintillating stuff like that. Does uh, that check with what you found, or is there more to it? Well, Lieutenant Graham was in an even worse frame of mind when I saw him. Yeah? What do you want to see about? Unhappiness, Lieutenant. Oh, unhappiness, he says. Now, would you mind being just a little more specific? Was he unhappy because of his golf game? Or did someone nudge his fenders? Come on, come on, get to the point or I'll... Yes, sir, Lieutenant, yes, sir. Yeah. Graham was unhappy because he wasn't getting along with Mrs. Graham. He wanted me to get the usual kind of evidence. And we have scruples, you know, Lieutenant. I know, I know. Well, he wouldn't be the first guy to bump himself off because of a sour marriage. Where is Mrs. Graham? Uh, in the drawing room with that whatchamacallit guy, Vickers. Oh, how cozy. Yeah. Hey, Doc, are you through? Yes, Lieutenant. Uh, seems to be just as the family doctor said. And what was that? Oh, hello, Valentine. Uh, Grim loaded his highball glass full of Renapol, Lieutenant. Renapol? Yeah. You can buy it in any drugstore. You don't need a prescription. It's specific for headaches, mostly migraine. Well, wouldn't Graham have to take a lot of it? He took a whole bottle. Oh. And with whiskey, that really means a one-way ticket. Anyway, he didn't find it hard to take. It's practically tasteless. Well, I'll go and tell Mrs. Graham. There'll be an inquest in a couple of days. And I'll go write out my report. So long, Doc. All right, my fancy friend. Why did you hold out on the lieutenant like that? Did I do that? Oh, stop being coy, George. Well, everything I said was the absolute truth. Yeah, but you didn't say enough. You could have made this thing look more like murder and less like suicide. 
You know, house full of dynamite, the first husband who was crazy for liver patty sandwiches. Well, you heard the lieutenant, Angel. There'll be an inquest, so the facts will come out a few days later. Yes, but what's the idea? Just this, Brooksy. I want Sylvia to play her hand as though she had all the cards in the deck. Give her every chance to make a slip. Oh. George. Mm. What have you got there under your top coat? You mean this? Oh, you swiped her picture. Oh, now, wait a minute. Yeah, I'm going to put it on my desk and just stare at it. <laughs> what do you think it'll do to me? It'll get you a black eye from me. Oh, now, look, what's on, what's on your mind, George? I don't know, Brooksy. Let's say just a hunch. Now, you run along home. I'm going to pay a few calls on the neighborhood druggist. See you in the morning. Now, let me see. Well, the fact is, I haven't seen Mrs. Graham in my drugstore in weeks. I see. The truth is, I sold one bottle of Renapal recently, and that was to a man. Oh, what did he look like? Can you remember? Come on, try. Oh, that's easy. He was a big strapping fellow. I was saying to myself, who'd think anybody like that would have a head hair? Yeah, yeah, but what did he look like? Yeah, broad shoulders, blonde hair, like an athlete. That's enough. Thank you, friend. Alone, Sylvia? What did you do? Send Tommy home? Yes, George. You see, I took the trouble to find out your first name. Oh. I thought Tommy'd be here trying to comfort you in your bereavement. Well, he was. But his efforts were getting a little too arduous. And I've had a long and hectic day. What do you want? I just wanted to tell you I know Tommy bought that Renapal. Oh, really? Well, maybe he had a headache. <laughs> oh, I'm full of all kinds of miscellaneous information tonight. I also know that a certain Mr. Frankel ate his way into an early grave. I'm an ill-starred woman. I just can't keep husband. Well, it should make interesting small talk at the inquest. Oh, you won't get a rise out of me. I can try. How about this? What happened to your picture, Sylvia? What? So you're the one who took it. Well, it's just a picture. I want it back, and you're going to give it to me. Going to the police? <laughs> you seem to have lost some of your poise, Sylvia. I swear I'll kill you if you don't get out of my life. I moved in to stay. You're going to change your mind. Well, I'm going to take it easy. Put that punch bowl down. It's probably worth a lot of dough. You forgot that I've got plenty of money. Watch you. you. You're going to have a face full of scratches for weeks. Get away. Do you want me to take it? You still think that I couldn't care. Sylvia, what's going on? Oh, oh Tommy. Oh, Tommy. So glad you've come back. Valentine, what are you trying to do? Defend myself, and not too successfully. Tommy, one minute more, and I wouldn't have known what to do. You do anything to hurt her, Valentine, and I'll kill you. Well, why don't you start now? I feel just like... Well, you so bet I'll do! Yeah. I don't bother getting up, Jungle Jim. Just listen. Being threatened with murder twice in five minutes does something for my ego. But it does even more to my temper. You have had a pretty busy five minutes, haven't you? Slow motion, Sylvia. Just wait till I really get started. We'll return to tonight's adventure of George Valentine in just a moment. Brings you in deadly conflict with the wife, Sylvia. You can't say she's the most beautiful woman you've ever seen because you haven't seen them all. Yes, Sylvia, who has you threatened with death twice in five minutes. George, isn't it enough to have Sylvia's picture in front of you on the desk? You don't have to stare at it with a magnifying glass. Yeah, well, somehow, Angel, I don't feel I've gotten close enough to that lady. Well, you've gotten close enough for her to play tic-tac-toe all over your face. Well, it wasn't all one-sided. She has a few broken fingernails to show for it. Oh, darling, you know you're skating on thin ice. Especially now that you found out Vickers bought that Renapal. That's right. Go ahead and comfort me. Now, look, Brooksy. Yeah, this picture of Sylvia stealing all the glory from the beautiful mansion in the background was taken by a professional photographer. Well, so what? So his name is on the back of it, Horace Maddox in Sanford. I want you to have a chat with him. Way out in Sanford? Yeah, that's right. Find out when he took this picture, where, the name of the woman, everything. Oh, George, we know the name. Don't argue, Brooksy. Just make sure you're back in time for the inquest. I'm going to need that information. To prove what? What I'm only guessing now. Oh. 
Well. Hello. I'm not used to receiving ladies in my apartment at this hour. Besides, I don't remember putting you on my list. Aren't you going to ask me in? I really ought to frisk you for deadly weapons first, but come on in. Thank you. All right, Sylvia, what is it? George, why can't you like me? Like you? Why, you're my fluffy little lamb. I know you think I'm here because I want something. Yeah, and I bet I know what it is. You were baking a cake and you just ran out of sugar. I want that picture. Oh, no, no, Sylvia, no fisticuffs tonight. Now, this time I'm willing to pay for it, George. Hmm? In exchange, you can have me and everything I've got. It's like being offered Fort Knox and throwing in Hedy Lamar as an afterthought. I think I'd like the arrangement, too. I have an idea that you'd be the first man I ever met who'd be able to tell me what to do. Well, thanks. That puts me right in the same class with Clyde Beatty. As far as money's concerned, George, you may know what you're getting. I don't want there to be any unknown quantity in the deal. <sighs> Oh. <laughs> and to think they go to all that trouble to make an atom bomb. Well? Look, Sylvia, I want to live a little longer. You're as treacherous as the ragged edge of an open tin can. Now, get what? this straight. I'm sticking with this case, even if it gives me gray hair and bursitis in the left shoulder. All right. Now, I've got a surprise for you. Here we go. Yesterday, Tommy Vickers and I were married. Okay. You can stop rocking on your heels, George. Married to Vickers? And still making fancy offers? That could have been arranged. You'd just have to wait a little while. Oh, brother, this is the jackpot. First Hugh Frankel, then Leslie Graham, then Tom Vickers. Then eventually one George Valentine. I don't know what you mean. Are you crazy? Never mind that. <sighs> let me tell you why I married Tom. No, let me tell you. Because I'm a chump, a nuthead. With what I knew, I could have stopped it. Yes, but you didn't, Doc. Now, when this case comes to trial, you won't have to testify against Tommy. All the background of this sordid little triangle. The story I'll tell is that I knew suspicion might point to Tom. But to show my faith in his innocence, I married him anyway. Oh, I gotta hand it to you, Sylvia. Me too. The other way. It's too bad one of us has to lose. And it's not going to be me. <laughs> Yes, Miss Brooks, I remember very well the day I took that picture. Well, that's fine, Mr. Maddox. Uh, Annie was so excited, I could hardly make her stand still. Annie? Uh, why, yes. Annie Ferguson, that's her name. Oh. Yes, please go on. She was so beautiful that day. She kept rattling on about her father's mansion. She wanted to make sure that I got Woody crashed into the picture. In a way, it was, uh, well, a little pathetic. Well, is there anything else you can remember about her? Well, I know she couldn't have been very happy there because shortly afterwards she ran away. Oh, I see. Well, now tell me, just how do I get to this Woody Crest? Oh, it's just on the outskirts of town. Any cab will take you there. Oh, that's fine. Uh, they'll be glad to see you. I know they've been trying to locate Annie all these years. All right, everybody, we can start now. This is Assistant District Attorney Griggs. This is all going to be very informal. We ought to be out of your house in a little while, Mrs. Graham. Oh, that's all right, Mr. Griggs. I'm supposed to assure all of you that you're not supposed to say anything here today that might incriminate you, just in case what transpires here warrants an indictment. Is that clear? Yeah, that's right. We all know the circumstances of Leslie Graham's death. Do you have any further comments to make on your autopsy report, Coroner? No, sir. Death due to overdose of Renapol. Very well. We can go on. Just a few questions. I believe, Valentine, you said you had something important in connection with this inquiry. Yeah, that's right, D.A. I have another witness I'd like to introduce. Sergeant, tell Mr. Cook we're ready for him now. Yes, sir. Hello? Oh, yes. Oh, yes, certainly. It's for you, Mr. Valentine. Thanks. Look, Valentine, do you have to have personal calls in here? Well, it won't happen again, Lieutenant. Uh, Hello? Yeah, Brooksy. The airport? Well, you ought to be able to get here in a few minutes. Go on. Well, I guess now I can stop guessing. Go on, hop a cab, Angel. All right, now, are you Mr. Cook? Uh, yes, sir. 
Well, look, don't be nervous. I just want to ask you one question. Take a look around this room. Uh, yes. A few days before Leslie Graham's death, someone bought a bottle of Renapol in your drugstore. Do you see that person in this room? I, I guess. It's that gentleman over there with the blonde hair. Hey, what is this? Is that true, Mr. Vickers? Well, uh, I guess so, but uh, I didn't think it was important. Ye gods, not important, he says. I could buy Renapol. Joe Smith could buy it. But when you do, Vickers, it's more than important. <laughs> well, uh, Why'd I... you buy it? Do you suffer from headaches? Well, no, but uh, I can explain. Why don't you, Vickers? Well, it's all very simple. I, I don't know how Leslie got hold of this stuff, but I bought it for Sylvia. Tom, what? What do you say? Well, didn't I? Why, for months you've been telling me about those terrible headaches going to the doctor twice a week. Tom. Tom, I don't want to believe this. Believe what? It was raining that day. You wanted to get home, so you asked me to stop in at the drugstore. Is that true, Mrs. Graham? Or Mrs. Vickers, rather? I keep forgetting. Oh, Mrs. Vickers. That's the only thing I can think of. I'm married to the man who killed Leslie. Sylvia! Keep talking, Mrs. Vickers. I haven't had a headache in ages. My doctor can tell you that. Tom. Oh, Tom, I believed you. You were such a comfort when Leslie wasn't himself. And now to think that you try to use me to get out of this terrible mess. But I'm not. I'm, I'm, I'm not. Leslie may not have been the best husband in the world, but he was a human being. Oh, Tom. Oh, Tom, I can't. I can't lie for you. I Kiss of death. What did you say, Valentine? Uh, nothing, Lieutenant. I was just sympathizing with Mrs. Vickers. You can do that later, Valentine. Surely you've got something to say, Vickers. Well, I, I could go on saying I'm innocent. What good would it do? You didn't buy this run of power for Mrs. Graham, then it couldn't have accidentally found its way into her husband's whiskey. Facts leave me no choice but to ask for an indictment for murder. Uh, just a minute, Griggs. I'd like to say something. If it has something to do with the case, go ahead, Valentine. First of all, I agree that there should be an indictment for murder. Oh, what are you doing? Just making it unanimous? Come on, quit stalling. Hey, hey, hold on there, young lady. Where do you think you're going? Out of my way, Sergeant. I don't have to stall any longer, Lieutenant. Here you are, George. Good, good. What's this all about? One minute, T.A. Yeah, Lieutenant. Hmm? Riggs, take a look at this picture. Hmm. Well, what about it? Just wanted you to look at it. Now, you, Sylvia. Do you recognize this? <laughs> Well, of course. That's a picture of myself. And the house in the background. That's Father's mansion on our estate. Uh-huh. Gentlemen, take a look at this picture through this magnifying glass. The white plaque on the entrance post. Ordinarily, you can't see it. Go on, now, what does it say, Griggs? Well, I can make out, uh... Woody Crest. Okay, that's the name of the place. But there's another word that follows. You can only see the first two letters. The shrubbery covers the rest. That's right. S, A. Well, surprisingly few words in the English language beginning with S A that fit with Woodycrest. Would you give us that word, Sylvia? No. Brooksy, you just came from Sanford. What did you find Woodycrest was? A sanatorium. More brutally, a mental institution, an insane asylum. No. Oh, oh, no. They're still looking for one Annie Ferguson who escaped five years ago and embarked on a new life and a new career. Murder. <laughs> Help me with the great stuff. Help me. Sylvia, Sylvia, no matter what they do, I'll stick by you. You didn't know what you were doing. Well, Sylvia. You fool. Don't you realize that you were going to sit in the gas chamber for what I did to Leslie? And I'd get your money, too. But now you know. Now you know. You know. Yes, Annie. Now we know who is Sylvia and what she is. All right, all right, Valentine. You were as smart as a whip. But don't think I'm forgetting you held out on me. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, Lieutenant. I thought that was the only way to do it. <laughs> but the next time... Time, time. Back to your corners, gentlemen. <laughs> oh, saved by the bell. <laughs> oh, darling, I know your mind moves in mysterious ways, but... Yeah? But what made you so sure it was murder and it had to be Sylvia? Well, no matter how much of a patsy Tommy boy is, he wouldn't buy any poisonous substance right at the corner drugstore. That's when I vaguely began to suspect some kind of a trap. More coffee, folks? Oh, uh, yes, yeah, please. Yes, I'd yes, like to. When you're through there, I'll take a check, Sylvia. What's your name, sister? Sylvia. I don't feel uh, so good. I, uh... 
I don't think I want any more coffee. I want to go home. Most motorists today expect and deserve at least three things from their cars. Fast start, smooth acceleration, and lots of extra power. And if you haven't been enjoying these three motoring advantages, we'll have to blame it on the recent and unavoidable shortage of Chevron Supreme gasoline. But the shortage is over, and right now you can get high-octane Chevron Supreme again at most any standard station or independent Chevron gas station. So if your car has had starting trouble, and if it's been logy on hills, say goodbye to all that annoyance by saying, fill her up with Chevron Supreme. One of the reasons this premium quality gasoline gives your car all the motoring advantages your car was made for is because it's climate tailored. That means Chevron Supreme gasoline gives peak performance in each different altitude and temperature zone, wherever you drive in the West. Ask for a tank full at an independent Chevron gas station or a standard station where they say and mean we'll take better care of your car. Next week, when you tune our way for another adventure of George Valentine, you'll find George poring over the latest letter to come to his desk, a letter that reads... Dear Valentine, I bet you never heard of this before. I've got to commit a crime to keep from being a criminal. And what I've got to do involves murder. There's no way out for me unless I can get some help. You can't get in touch with me, so I'll be dropping in on you. The name? Bill Moran. Next week, a new and exciting case for George. Stand in for murder. Tonight's adventure of George Valentine has been brought to you by Standard of California on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and Standard stations throughout the West. Let George Do It stars Robert Bailey as George with Francis Robinson as Claire. Wally Mayer appears as Lieutenant Riley. Tonight's story was written by David Victor and Herbert Little Jr. and directed by Don Clark. Also heard in the cast were Francis Cheney as Sylvia, Louis Van Ruten as Graham, George Neese as Tommy, Ken Christie as Griggs, and Fred Howard as Maddox. The music is composed and conducted by Eddie Dunstetter, your announcer, John Heaston. Listen again next week, same time, same station, to Let George Do It. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System.